Now, the next step is to verify the import process itself. You have to click on the import report and take a look at all the objects that were being imported successfully. So you can see that the migration report has date, the machine name it's connecting to, and all the other objects and attributes that are being imported. Finally, you can observe the execution time. It said six minutes. And you can see that there is a big difference between the time taken for export and import. Export took us 24 minutes, whereas import took only six minutes. So having looked at the import report, let's take a look at some of the actual files that are created under the migration tool folders and subfolders. Let's open up the Windows Explorer and go to the Migration Tool folder and go to the Reports subfolder. And when you click on that, it opens up the folder and you can see that there are three reports the Export, Import, and the Policy Gap Analysis report. When I click on the Import report, it displays all the objects that are being imported and you can see the execution time summary here as well. The duration is six minutes. As part of migration, whenever you export, there is a new export report that gets created. So when you fix an exception in ACS and re-export, it gets overwritten again. So if you re-export a couple of times and import, whenever you export, make sure you save the old export report in a different location so that you can get a copy of it even if it's over right this is something important to remember so that you have all the logs of your exports at the end of your migration including exports and imports if your process becomes iterative finally let's take a look at the migration logs right you have runtime logs in the command console as well as in the migration tool. Now all the events and activities that happens within the migration tool is captured in this log file, migration.log. When you open up the log file in the notepad, you will see a lot of information related to the process, the events, the objects being migrated, etc. So this shows the entire process of the migration. And if there is any problem, this is the best place to go to find where the problem is, to fix it. Now once we complete the migration, the next step is to visually verify if those objects are carried over from ACS to ICE. Let's start with the users. You see that we have around 391 users in ACS. Except for one, which is the admin user, all the other users got migrated. In ICE, we see that there are 390 users. When we expand the identity groups, we can visually verify if these identity groups are carried over. Unfortunately, ACS does not have the number of identity groups available in the UI. So I expand these identity groups and visually match to those in ICE. We can see that the identity groups as well as the hierarchy is migrated from ACS to ICE. And whenever an object is migrated from ACS to ICE, that object has the description called migrated from ACS5. Next, we will look at the network devices group. When you go to ACS, network resources, network device groups, there are three device groups in ACS, in ICE, there are three as well. These include some of the device groups 
that are existing in NICE already by default. You can see that in network devices we have 3,218 in ACS, the same number of network devices in ICE after migration. The next item we will look at the authorization profile which is under policy elements in ICE UI. So under policy elements authorization profiles we have uh, 78 authorization profiles in ACS However, we have around 84 in ICE, and there are certain authorization profiles that are pre-built in ICE, and hence you have this additional number. Same with command sets. You have four command sets in both ACS and ICE. In shell profiles, you have around 20 shell profiles in ACS. In ICE, you see that you have around 25, and this is because ICE already has some pre-built TACAX profiles, such as wireless controller all and wireless controller monitor, as you see from above. It also has a deny all and default shell profile. So when you look at the downloadable ACLs, 77 in ACS and 79 and this is again because of the additional pre-built downloadable ACLs in ICE. Let's take a look at the service selection policy and this is a key area right you want to make sure that the policies are in fact gotten migrated correctly. Now when you visually verify these things, you have to look at the service selection policy. We have around nine service selection policy. Now in IS there are two sections and one is a device admin, the other one is a network access. So you go to network access and uh, look at the policy sets and we see that there are two policy sets and that got created. Now we do the same in device admin. We see that there are around seven policy sets so in total we have nine policy sets that got migrated over, which is fantastic. Now let's take a look at uh, the external proxy and see how and where it gets migrated in ICE. When you click on the external proxy radius in ACS and you see that there is a radius IETF username attribute, with results, external proxy ICE. So in ICE, when you go back, it creates this condition which matches the network access protocol and the username. The username equals NetOps2, as we saw earlier. Now let's take a look at service selection rule, radius authentication. When you click on the service selection rule, it says that it matches protocol radius and the results shows that it uses the service PA RAS access. In ICE, the results in ACS, PA RAS access, got converted to allowed protocols in ICE. Right? The name of the policy remains the same and the condition remains the same but the results got moved to allowed protocols. So when you go back to the ACS and look at the RAS access service, let's make sure the allowed protocol in fact matches with ICE. In ICE user interface, we go to network access, policy elements, results, allowed protocol, we see the entry migrated access services from ACS. 
we open up the RAS access entry on both ACS and ICE. We have PAP, MSCHAP, PEEP, EPFAST, the preferred protocol being PEEP. Here in ICE, it's the same. We see all the entries being correctly migrated from ACS to ICE. When you look at the authorization policy, we see the hit count in the authorization policy. This is something that will be supported in the future releases of ICE. So when we go to access policies, access services, open up PA RAS access and look at the authorization policies. Now we see that there are around 66 policies. When you go back to work centers, network access, policy sets in ICE under authorization policy, you can see that each policy has an inline condition with a result which could be an authorization profile. Let's take an example of a TACAC service selection policy in ACS and ICE. You can see that the TACAC's prime auth service selection rule maps to PA prime access access service. Also, all the conditions in ACS matches to the inline condition in ICE. Please remember that the service selection policy in ACS became policy sets in ICE. Let's take a look at the authorization policy under the access services, PA Prime Access. We see that there are around eight authorization policies with different names. When you go to ICE under TACAX Prime Auth Policy Sets, we also see that there are around eight entries. And also make sure the names and the policy conditions are accurate. You can see that the authorization condition in ACS and ICE for the authorization policy PAC network admin are the same. Finally, a couple of more things. The certificate authentication profile is pre-created in ICE, as you can see. And the uh, Active Directory configuration. We have seen that the Active Directory configuration was empty before the migration. And uh, after the migration is complete, it is populated. However, it is not joined yet. And it is up to the admins to go and join the Active Directory domain. You also can verify the attributes being migrated from ACS to ICE. This concludes our verification part for the migration between ACS to ICE, concluding the third and the final part of the ACS to ICE migration. I hope you enjoyed this session. Here are some of the references for licensing and migration. The most important reference that you need is the ACS to ICE migration community link, which has tons of references, links, video tutorials, how to doc, and so much more. And you also need the ACS licensing facts, so please make sure to bookmark these links. Please also bookmark ICE performance